Uh, here we are. Hello, uh, all you hardcores. On to part two now. All you haters as well. Keep, keep, keep sending your uh, emails in. If you're blocked from me, or going to miss spam, and I don't read those, but keep them coming. We like to keep uh, on top of things. Right then, moving on then, Dale. Right, we've got obviously the Sky Company men. Right, who, who were pushing the narrative. Bell you, Andy Lee. Andy Lee turned. Andy Lee were a renegade when he first started at Sky, but he now looks to be like he's got joint, gone over to the dark side. What do you think? Sorry, you broke up a little bit. Sorry, tonight. Andy Lee, when he first started out as a pundit on Sky, he uh, he was a bit of a renegade and he was going against the narrative, but now he seems to be well on, well in, well in the company man lane. What do you think? He goes Refreshing, but sooner or later they get they get their hands on the play-doh and they start moulding them into whatever they want them to be. <laughs> play-doh. Yeah, that's what these exploiters are, isn't they? I mean, you know, Andy Lee never really fought on Sky all too much anyway. So, to a lot of these casual fans, they probably wouldn't even have ever heard of him. Let me tell you a story about Andy Lee. Right? I think I've told this story a few years ago when I first started on the channel. In fact, I think it might have even been on uh, Baylorick TV. Do you know Ingram from London? Is it Hackney? But let's listen to this story, right? I went to Frotch Groves uh, 1, the Manchester one, and uh, Eddie Hearn got, got me tickets for it. I had to go to the weigh-in and get them. And uh, I went to meet Robin Reed to get these tickets. Anyway, we got the tickets at the weigh-in. Actually, I paid £200 for the tickets. Eddie won't take the money off at me at first. And I said, no, nah, I don't want no off you. Because he gave me them Sanchenko ones. But if you take out off them, you're in the pocket. Because they want you to put stuff out on social media. That's how it works. So I give him the 200 He goes, go on then, I'll not turn the cash down, Porky. But to be fair to Eddie Hearn, and I've told this story before. The two tickets he gave me and... My kid's mum were worth 1,300 quid, they were ringside. We were sat behind Huey Fury and Andy Lee, right? And Andy Lee had this tracksuit on, and it said on it, Andy Lee. With a blue tracksuit with his name on it, on, on legs and on his back. Anyway, when George Groves got stopped, because uh, when George Groves stopped frotching, dropped him at first round, it went quiet, the full arena. You could hear, you could hear a pin drop. Right, but to cut a long story short, when the fight got stopped by Howard Foster, uh, obviously I were I were drunk, drunk as a skunk. I mean, we staggered into arena about quarter to ten. We were that drunk. We're in that is is it summit rooms or summer in in, in Manchester near Chinatown. But anyway, we would sta staggered into re arena drunk, and if I have had a, a ringside ticket, I don't think we'd have got in. But when Groves was stopped at the end we were jumping up and down like nutcases and obviously uh my kid's mum don't she don't swear and she don't normally drink but she'd had a few drinks and she was steaming and obviously she 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 likes carl frotch and she gets on with him all right so we were steaming drunk and to cut a long story short andy lee turned round and obviously we're jumping about like nutcases but people were booing, you know, the decision. And Andy Lee said, I suppose you think that's good, that, don't you? And uh, my kid's mum said, yeah, we do. We fucking hate Groves. And it were right, so unlike her to say that. And I thought, oh, my God, here, I'm going to get iced here. <laughs> Sat behind Huey Fury and, and Andy Lee, because obviously Andy Lee and Groves go way back, don't they? But uh, nothing. Andy Lee just shot over to... Uh, to Groves Corner to speak to, to speak to him and that and uh, she went out of order saying that like but and I, do, I felt sorry for Groves actually at the time but looking back why should I it's a boxing fight innit I'm not the referee am I do you know what I mean I know I know the stoppage might have been a couple of seconds early but when you look at it they were, he, he wasn't firing back with them unanswered there were 17 unanswered punch, punches weren't there and Howard Foster years later and I, and I see Howard Foster a lot now he, he don't live too far, too far from me it's all going to be in Howard Foster's book right but let me tell you this 
George Groves had a concussion and he was kept in hospital, but they never told that, did they, to the crowd? Because they wanted to hype the rematch up, didn't they? And it's all going to come out in Howard Foster's book, right? So, and don't forget, Howard Foster had death threats. He had his car damaged and all sorts. People actually went to his house and damaged his car and, you know, caused loads of problems and stuff like that. And that's what you get in boxing. Uh, I've had it myself. Do you know what I mean? And, but... Howard Foster's book is going to reveal all, let me tell you. But getting back to that, to Andy Lee, I think he's a company man, and I think he's gone over to the dark side. He started out really good as a commentator, and he is a good commentator, but I think Paul Smith and Jamie Moore, I think they're the best ones out there. Paul Smith and Jamie Moore are the best commentators. Macklin's not bad, but... He's pushing. He's go, they're going to push the narrative. They're going. They're going to. They're not going to go against the grain, are they? They're not going to bite the hand that's feeding them, are they? No, no. And, and talking of company men, anyway, uh, obviously Darren Barker. Darren oh, Darren Barker's yeah. company man. It. The votes I've had this month for Darren Barker for helmet of the month. He. he oh, well, I don't usually reveal votes, but at the moment, Darren Barker. And bell you uh, 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 astronomical votes that they've had come in, but especially bell you in last in last 24 hours. Uh, keep your votes coming in, Porky Corner at mail dot com. But Darren Barker's just sh shocking. The uh, what he comes out with is shocking, uh, in my opinion. Well, obviously, um, he wants that video taken down, didn't he? That's why he booted off at that OFL lad yesterday, yeah. or, or whoever it was on Twitter don't put that video online and it's all because obviously he's actually given an honest opinion and being a Sky company man that doesn't really fit the mould does it so that's why he's getting all touchy about it because he thinks he might potentially lose his job at Sky over it probably let me tell you this right I've been in Darren Barker's company years ago before he won a world title let me tell you this right <laughs> do you know what people like that right they're just like us they have opinions but we're brave enough to say our opinion other people have an opinion, right? And what they do, they they don't want people to know about it. People have opinions about all sorts in life, but people like that, they don't want people to know. And it, it, it looked to me like you were raging about it, and he didn't really say anything out of ordinary, did he? He just thought that his guy won, and it were out of order. I mean, I don't know where he had it for, for four rounds to John Ryder, but he put it out there. And if they let if they let somebody in the room with a camera, what do they expect? Well, it's freedom of speech. At the end, at the end of the day, he's allowed to film that if he wants to. Yeah, is he? Yeah, he's allowed to film that if he wants to. Well, I mean, yeah. But like like I said, I, I'm not keen on Darren Barker, but I felt sorry for John Ryder. Darren Barker, Tony Sims, I thought they got the game plan right. Maybe they didn't rip the belt off him, but Callum Smith looked to me like he was hanging up for his life. But the commentators were, were making it, making it, making him look good. Put it this way, right? And I'm a big Jamie Moore fan. I think he's one of the best pundits out there. When Paul Smith fought Zuga, right, he lost the first seven rounds. And Jamie Moore was saying things like, well, Paul Smith's probably saving it for the end. He's going to have a late rally. Paul Smith got dropped in round 12. Now, go listen to commentary, commentary after that. They don't say a word because there's a narrative. I mean, I've brought this up before. Clinton Woods were brought into Sky to be a studio pundit on a fight in America. Now, Clinton at the time was a world champion. And Clinton said a few things as a pundit that night that... Sky didn't like so Clinton's words were I don't know if anybody knows Clinton Woods but he's a lovely family man and he just says it as he sees it and if you've got a problem you can go outside and have a knock on garden with him because Clinton just says it as he sees it and he said look you've got me here as a British Commonwealth European and a world champion and uh, he's got four wins over world champions as well he's more than Tony Bell you more than Tyson Fury and the same as Chris Eubank Sr. So they've got him there as an expert, somebody at the top of his game, but yet they're trying to tell him about boxing and what he can say. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. I think it was about somebody who, being in with somebody, and he, he, I think he said they shouldn't, 
he shouldn't be in with him. I mean, what uh, something like that it was, you know what I mean, kind of thing. And they were like, no, you can't say that. It's uh, it's a Sky Fighter. And Clinton's like, well, well, what am I here for? Well, that's just how Clinton is. He's, you know, he's a bit. He's, I'm not saying he's a bit wooden, but he's a bit not curt. He's just a straight shooter, a bit like Robin Reed. Robin Reed's like that. He won't cow tail. Robin Reed won't cow tail down to the narrative. And when you're like that, you don't get invited back. But do you see where I'm coming from? Now, some of them, they need to go back there. They need the fix. There's multi-millionaires working at Sky Sports on the boxing department. Multi-millionaires. And they need their fix. They oh, need no. it. Pardon? Bellew's Bell one of them. Johnny Nelson, he's 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 rich off at back of what? Who, who's Johnny Nelson's best three wins? Can you name can you name anybody after Carl Thompson? Can you name a win that he's had after Carl Thompson that were any good? But he had fourteen defences, wasn't it? WBO Reign of Terror. <laughs> WBO Reign of Terror. Yeah, you, you, you're you having a WBO title defence, but you're first on on show on night. <laughs> I don't even think, right, until... I don't even think until the last couple of years anybody really counted the WBO, do they really, to be honest? No, uh, does that, does anybody rate the WBO? Well, no, I mean, fucking Eubank had the WBO, didn't he? Yeah, and, and, and they're trying to push the narrative now that... They're going to do with the IBO what he did with the WBO. I don't know, mate, but... Do you think the IBO's a better belt than the WBO? No. No. Which is the best belt? Well, it's obviously the WBC, isn't it? What would you say after that? I'd probably go WBC, IBF, WBA, WBO. Yeah, then IBO. Yeah. And what after IBO? Fucking Lanil. Lanil. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think to this Lanil situation with Tyson Fury? Oh, it's, it's all bollocks, isn't it? Hey, what do you it's think? What? Open your text three years in the ring and call yourself the Lanil champion. Hey, who's Tyson Fury's best three wins? Is that it? Is that is that his reign of terror? That's it, yeah. That's it. Why didn't he fight Lewis Ortiz, Tyson Fury in 2014 when he were offered it? They called him the bogeyman, didn't they? Yeah. Why didn't he fight Lewis Ortiz when the McKenzie were offered fight for good money by Golden Boy? Because uh, he's in the. Two as well, didn't they? Hey. They did what? Didn't they turn down two left to fight David A? Yeah, Tyson Fury should have fought David A twice. But David A pulled out both times. What do you think to David A's career? Um, think he could have done better? He's he come out of it as a two-weight world champion, unified in one division. I hate the fact that they call him um, undisputed, because he weren't undisputed, was he? He never had the IBS belt. In a life and death. He's doing two belts and then he fought Enzo Macronelli, who's got no fucking chin, tailor made for him, and then he and then he fits the patterns around but anyway, he didn't cherry pick the world title. Yeah. Yeah. Do uh, what do you think about the guy who won the world title about a heavyweight? What do you think to that fight? Well, he's probably second to Charles Martin as the worst ever champion, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd say that and Bone Crusher Smith. They're probably the least, uh, and Tony Tubbs, you know, that era, Pinkland Thomas. You know, the forgot, the lost the generation kind of heavyweight. Yeah, the problem. You know, I think Hazard Rathman was a bit of a shit champion as well. Yeah, but he caught Lennox Lewis with a beauty, didn't he? Yeah. What do you think about uh, the Sky pay per view uh, current situation at the moment, Dale? Well, the fact that it's got up to 25 quid. 
Yeah. Well, I don't see in what other world, in what other world would you have someone lose a voice, or for example, you go into a shop and you've got a car and the spec's been downgraded, but there's like twenty five percent increase onto the product. Yeah. Yeah, you think so, yeah? Yeah, Adam Smith is saying that uh, it's not to do with Eddie Hearn. Eddie didn't know they were putting it up a fiver. What do you think to that? I just think it's terrible order. I, I absolutely order. Do you? Well, wasn't he? Dillian White's fighting in Saudi, right? He, he's going to be on probably 500 grand, isn't he? To fight the fucking nobody. What, a Malcolm Tan? He? He's, he'll be fighting a Malcolm Tan, won't he? Do you remember him when he fought Malcolm Tan? Who's Dillian White's best free wins? Parker. Brown. And uh, Rivers. I think I think Chisora is a better win than Brown. Do you? Yeah, because Dave Allen beat fucking Brown. Yeah, well, all right then. You could get Del Boy twice. Both life and deaths, though, weren't they? Yeah, both life and deaths. Chisora, Chisora, I had Chisora winning the first fight, and the second fight, Chisora was up. Yeah, Del Boy twice, Brown. And Parker and Rivers. He's got five decent wins there for White. It's actually Dillian White's record since he's gone with Mark Tibbs is pretty good record. He's gone ten and oh. Ten and oh with Mark Tibbs. So he's done he's done alright, but, but like I said, it he, he needs he needs a, a world title shot. I mean this is another fight where he's not in a world title shot. People are going to keep saying to you, Dillian, when are you going to get a world title shot? Well, he's had offers to fight Wilder, hasn't he? Did, I don't see him wanting to take the WBC to court to fight Wilder. Why don't he sue the WBC? Because he knows he's guilty. Why don't he sue the WBC? That's all he's got to do, sue them. Yeah, no problem, Dale. Should we, up, um, should we pick up next week and, uh, or the week after and do a big preview on the Joshua card? Yeah, we'll do that then. All right, Dale? Right, good oh, chat, mate. All the best. You take care, mate. And you, bye. Bye, bye. That was uh, Dale Nichols from the West Midlands, a fellow hardcore boxing fan out there. Uh, very passionate about the sport. Goes to a lot of shows. Big mates with uh, Smido from the Boxing Asylum. So, uh, mainly covered some bits and bobs what we, we, I spoke about with, uh, with Terry uh, yesterday. And that's out today at 4pm. Uh, so, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this video out. Uh, 
uh, I'll probably do it now and I'll set it for tomorrow so you've all got something to look forward to tomorrow and I'll try and keep churning them out uh, I'm not going into uh, office today I've uh, I've got an appointment with bank gotta go bank and uh, set this internet banking nonsense up but I don't know if I'm gonna go on that because I don't trust internets I don't trust it there's too many people trying to rip people off on internet and blag people and scam you and so I think I'm just gonna stop in today it's very cold and wet and uh, I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna see my kids so I think that's about it really let's have a quick look on boxingscene.com let's see if there's anything uh, boxingscene.com yeah, I don't think John Ryder ripped the belt off him, but I think I had, I had him winning by two rounds. Uh, could I see a Callum Smith win? No. Would a draw have been a robbery? No, it would have been a bit harsh, I think, but... Trish Dixon, let's have a look what he's going on about here. Let's have a quick look at this. Uh Fury's trainer reacts to Wilder's big knockout of Ortiz. I mean... Everybody wants to keep the sentient limelight, don't they? Fury, Wilder only has a puncher's chance. I'll school him. Uh, well, Tyson Fury is a lot older since then, and Wilder's power looks to me like he's punching harder. Uh, going on the Otto Walling performance, you wouldn't say Tyson Fury is going to school Wilder, would you? Tyson, you wouldn't say that. But... Callum Smith struggles in debated win over John Ryder. Callum Smith, if Anfield is possible, I must be better. That's usually its first signs that a fighter's on his way out. Uh, let's have a look. Let's listen to Trish Dixon. He's a bit of a company man, isn't he? Trish Dixon. Uh, the guy who took the job at BT Sport that Rob Tebbett went for. WBC heavyweight champion. Deontay Wilder knew when it landed. He gestured to the crowd, said something to ringsiders and walked off. That huge right hand had just connected on the head of Luis Ortiz and the 40-year-old Cuban had fallen and couldn't get up. Wilder knew it was his 41st knockout in 42 wins. So he'd had plenty of practice landing shots that paralyse an opponent and leave them scrambling for the sensors and the legs. It had started quietly enough for the bombastic bronze bomber. The opening round was of the feeling out variety. Wilder was twitching, fainting for opportunities. Ortiz was racking up points behind economical jabs and southpaw left hands. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I had it 4-2 going into the seventh myself. But Wilder fights like he knows he holds the winning hand. He has the equaliser and he has 12 rounds in which he will be able to prize open one lone shot or that chance would reveal itself. You wouldn't associate Wilder with the word patience, but for several rounds he waited, he stood, he watched. Some thought he was looking uncomfortable, that the weight of pressure and expectation was getting to him. But Wilder fights with inevitability in his eyes. I will get you. <laughs> I suppose he does, doesn't he? He's the baddest man I've ever seen in a ring. Badder than Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson blew through a poor era, didn't he? Maybe Wilder's doing the same. He's not fighting for decisions or points. You're welcome to them. He's boxing to achieve one thing. Even at the end of round five when he was clipped by a hook and a straight shot, he shrugged and walked back to his corner. He was out for... F for round six, five rounds down on some cards, well before Ortiz. The challenge had been doing more than Wilder. The challenger had been doing more than Wilder and more than enough to win rounds. He too was boxing within himself, not letting himself get carried away with his successes. The crowd in Vegas oohed and ahed as Wilder unfilled a left hook that was wider the mark. But it's the sort of shot they pay money to see. 
or more per pertinently they pay to see what happens when it lands by round seven while they decided to let the bombs go Otis smiled he could feel the difference the mood had changed while they launched more in that round than he had in the fight to that point or so it felt Ortiz, emboldened with six positive rounds before him, engaged. The American worked his opponent's body but took some shots back. Ortiz was welcoming the fight. His mindset changed from trying to edge ahead each minute of each round to relaxing in a firefight. Then Wilder fired his bazooka. He poured out his left, not to hit or hurt the old man, but to line up the right. The signs were there. An Otis froze dead in its path. He actually leaned into the shot and milliseconds later his legs had collapsed. His back cannoned off the ropes and his head ricocheted off the canvas. His feet were jolted but his knees were open. It looked like he was stuck at the bottom of a sit-up. He fumbled both his mouthpiece and his sensors, rolled onto one knee, tried to step onto the canvas with both feet as though he were mouthing, as though he were mounting a tightrope, and then it was waved off. He didn't protest. He didn't even know what had happened. Six rounds had been turned to dust by the snapper Wilder's right hands. One face, one name, one punch. Time and again, he showed it doesn't matter what the critics say or what his opponent does. He will get you in the end. As it was earlier in the year, it's now over to you, AJ. After Wilder turned Dominic Brazil into a gif in May, the pressure was on Anthony Joshua to look spectacular. Against late sub Andy Ruiz, Joshua admitted he took the belt and tried to dazzle, and then he got caught. History was made and the trajectory of the division was changed. He would do well to try and ignore what happened in Las Vegas when he fights Ruiz as the challenger for his old belts in Saudi. In two weeks, the Englishman needs to win first with everything else secondary concerns. Whether he impresses, whether it's a knockout, it doesn't really matter. Of course it matters at £25 pay-per-view. Joshua needs a firm footing back in the division. He was commercially bossing before the wheels came off and to do that he needs the titles back. He needs to show what that what he needs to show that what happened in New York was just a blip. Or was a blip. Wilder, who made the tenth defence of his WBC belt, confirmed after last night's annihilation that the Tyson Fury meet rematch was on for as early as February, and then he wants to unify against either B against PBC stablemate Ruiz. Should he repeat the trick or against Joshua in what is likely the biggest fight that can be made in the sport today? Of course, there are many promotional and network obstacles that need to be negotiated if we are to get that, and Ortiz will still hope to come again too. Wilder vouched for him afterwards, saying he was worthy of another title shot, but the Cuban, depending on who you listen to, is 1,327 years old now, and won't be at the top of the shopping list of many top heavyweights. While we wait, Ruiz Joshua 2 and Wilder Fury 2 in the hope that we do wind up with one face and one name ruling the land of the giants. It would be nice if the inevitability, he used that word twice I think, of the fights happening was, an, was as inevitable as Wilder as a white or the white hand, because when it comes to politics, boxing and money, nothing can be taken for granted. Then you've got some comments. Uh, that's about it, really. So, we'll see, won't we? But I think that's about it for today. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic port. And um, shout out to Innovation Alloys. Uh, who are behind me. Uh, they're behind me even more now since... Uh, since the uh, Eddie Earn trolls got me off of Twitter, so maybe that were a good thing. <laughs> it did me a favour. So, but shout out to AJ Innovation Alloys, you're a top man. Thanks for backing the channel. And peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Shout out to Crusher at SBC. I'll see you on Friday, Crush. You'll be able to send and keep training, lad. 
you'll be the champ one day. All right, Crush, shout out to Eddie Hardy as well. Top man.